Dalvin and Zeke Elliott are free agents no more. They have signed, finally. Thank God. Um, we're, Alex and I are going to talk about what their signings mean for their prospective teams, their fantasy impact, and the guys that they are kind of bumping a little bit further down in our rankings. So, Alex, let's dive in right away. Let's start, please. Hold on. Just real quick. Can we just pour one out for Ramondre Stevenson? Just yeah. real quick. Oh, brutal. Well, you, there you go. I mean, start start with it. What does Zeke signing with the New England Patriots mean for Ramon Dre? I don't know, man. We we had him so far. Like I think I had him at five, which was outrageous to begin with. But there was no competition. You were banking on some touchdowns. He's a, a receiving back out of the backfield. And now they signed Zeke Elliott, who career has... You know, over 8,000 career rushing yards, another 2,300 receiving, kind of a do-it-all back. He's going to be their goal line pounder. You would think he has double-digit touchdowns uh, four different times in his career, uh, including each of the last two years with 12 and 10. You got to believe that they're going to give it to him down at the goal line. Also, the concern, Bill Belichick running backs, you're, you're always a little iffy on that, right? Zeke had no fumbles last year, uh, only one fumble the year before that, and it's kind of been Ramondre Stevens' bugaboo, right? So he had four fumbles last year, two fumbles the year before that. Belichick just doesn't put up with that crap. No. So it would not be at all surprising for Ramondre to fumble and Zeke is the guy there. So it just... It just sucks for Ramondre. Pure and simple, it sucks. We dropped him all the way down in our rankings. Uh, he's our consensus 20 ranked running back. You have him at 17. I have him at 20. And it just, because of other rankings being higher and lower, it just kind of how it, how it worked out. But he, he has the upside of an RB1, but in that offense, you don't really trust Mac Jones. All that much yet. They don't have like great receiving weapons on the outside. So yeah, this just kind of sucks. Yeah, he's gonna look a lot like I don't know, like a a worse version of Tony Pollard. I think at the end of the day, like yeah, you know, uh, Ian Harditz tweeted touchdown percentage on carries inside the five yard line among the twenty five most used goal line running backs from twenty twenty two. Zeke Elliott was fourth on that list with 56% conversion rate into touchdowns. Ramondre all the way down at 23, 28%. So Zeke is just far and away better in short yardage situations, better at the goal line than Ramondre is. I would anticipate Zeke to be in whenever they're inside the five yard line, maybe the 10, um, I think it's going to be Zeke's ball game. So unless Ramondre is hitting them from deep, you know, converting on some passes and other stuff. And, and honestly, they were a check down machine last year, but that was with a different offensive coordinator. If you could even call it an offensive coordinator, Matt Patricia. Um, so I, I don't even know how many catches Ramondre gets this year. And now you add Zeke. And it's, the workload is going to be there. He's going to be great between the 20s. But you turn into an RB2, you turn into like a worse version of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Yeah, you're exactly right. I don't have the stats up in front of me, but I know when we did our uh, RB1 podcast, just talking about Bill O'Brien, and he loves to run the ball. That you know, Traditionally, they run it in the top top third of the league in rushing attempts, at least when he was the Texans head coach. And so you think there's going to be plenty of carries for both Zeke and Stevenson in this offense. Keep in mind, Stevenson had 69 nice catches last year. Nice. But I just don't, it, it just muddies it too much where it's almost like a stay away completely in that backfield unless you're getting great value. So like if you were mocking before these signings, Ramondre was kind of going around the turn in round two, round three. 
that's clearly not going, he, you know, he's clearly not going to stay there. We love the value when he was getting picked there uh, and, and was a favorite of both of ours to take in that range if, if he was there. Not now anymore. you got to think, yeah, you got to think he's fallen to round four, maybe round five. It depends. Like, it really just depends. Uh, we do have Zeke Elliott ranked. Obviously now, uh, where does he come in at? He comes in at running back 37, at least initially. You have him at 42, I have him at 33. I think he's going to have double digit touchdowns probably. <laughs> so, so like, like, oh, you know, Dayton. Oh man. Would, yeah, you, but, would but like, you do a board bet on that? Yeah, I mean, if you give me odd, sure. But like, keep in mind, Damian Harris had what eighteen touchdowns or something like that two years ago. So uh, okay, or uh, fif- fifteen touchdowns uh, two years ago. So would it not at all surprise you for Zeke to have two hundred carries, nine hundred yards, and fifteen touchdowns like Damian Harris? Maybe not fifteen, but I could definitely see ten where they just pounded in with Zeke. So. I, I could see the 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 yardage production potentially not being there, but I can definitely see the touchdowns being there. Yeah, I just I don't know. I know he's not going to catch any balls, and I, all I play is PPR format, so I hate putting dudes up in flex territory when I know that they're not going to catch any balls, and I'm just going to have to be completely touchdown dependent on whether or not I win that week. So what, what makes you what makes you think that Zeke isn't going to catch any balls though? I mean, in the past he's had catches 77, 54, 52, 47. Last year he only had 17 because they were really deploying Pollard in that uh, type role. But I mean, Zeke historically has caught the ball, so it's it's not like they're going to be tipping. Oh, Damian Harris is on the field; they're going to run. Oh, Ramondre is on the field; they're going to pass. Zeke gives them both options. At, at all times, and so does Ramondre. So it actually makes their offense at least a little bit less predictable. It's certainly less predictable than it was Damian Harris, but I still think it's going to be semi-predictable. Like, Ramondre is definitely the better overall athlete, definitely more elusive than Zeke in this phase of Zeke's career, yep. and just the better all the better overall back. Like, I really think that they're probably just trying to save Ramon Day from taking the beating all season if they make the playoffs. And, you know, because he didn't playoffs. last all year. He he got dinged up at the end of the season, couldn't finish. So talk about playoffs. That's why. Yeah. That's the value I think Zeke adds. Yeah. I mean, at, at this point, don't you kind of think that the Patriots are probably the worst team in that division. <laughs> yeah, might be, like, might very well be <laughs> like when, when you have the jets, which we'll get to here in a minute, the bills, the dolphins, like from an offensive perspective, the Patriots are uh, by far and away the worst team is if, if Tua stays healthy, if, you know, if he goes down, then it's a little bit different of a conversation, but yeah, this, this sucks for Ramondre's value. Zeke, you know, we have in the thirties, I, I think that's where, you know, kind of he'll go, he'll be sitting there probably around, I don't know, nine, 10, somewhere in there. Um, just, just kind of depending, like we'll kind of see, uh, where he kind of shakes out ADP wise, but I would expect he's going to be more of a, a later round running back that, um, is a potential hall of famer that you can add to your roster where, um, double digit touchdown upside with, and if Ramondre gets hurt, then, uh, high RB2, low RB1 potential. There you go. From worst to first, let's pivot, please. Over to the New York J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Dalvin Cook has officially signed with the Jets. Uh, move out of the way, Brees Hall, or rest up, recover, recuperate. We'll see you in October, November, Brees Hall. Like, I mean, Brees... Br- we we've both slid Brees Hall down in our rankings. He's now what running back twenty five overall. So tell me what you think Dalvin means for Brees Hall this season. Trouble. <laughs> yeah. I smell T R O U B L E. Oh my! Shout out to you, country fans out there. I said, hey, I just don't think that this is good at all for Brees Hall. 
he we talked about we, we have a video do not draft Brees Hall all those points remain coming off a brutal knee injury probably wasn't going to be super explosive although I think he was clocked at like 24 miles an hour or something in practice the other day I I Straight line. I, I think it's just going to take a while for his knee injury. We've documented before J.K. Dobbins. Pretty much everybody has a rough year the Saquon. year after they come back, except except Adrian Peterson. So I just I, I wasn't that high on Brees Hall. I I didn't have much stock in him anyway. Dalvin, I think, absolutely destroys his value. And so this is another example of what do you want to do? I think Dalvin's the only running back in football that's rushed for over 1,100 yards each of the last four years. Uh, his touchdowns during that time period, 13, 16, 6, and 8, uh, starting in 2019 and going forward. He's going to get the ball in the end zone. Rodgers loves playing with experienced guys. And, you know, he has no problem dumping the ball down to his receivers uh, Dalvin's catches since his uh, rookie year where he got hurt, uh, 40, 53, 44, 34, 39. He can probably just go ahead and pencil him in for an easy 45 catch season uh, where Rodgers will just be dumping down to him if he's on the field enough. And so this becomes a split backfield at best. So do you want either one of them? Definitely not where Brees was going before, which was round three. He's he's got a got a fault around four or five now, and Dalvin is another guy who, you know, is going to be sitting there, you know, after some of like, do you take him or James Cook? Like, that's a, I, I would think that's an easy answer by taking James Cook, but Dalvin's proven it over and over, and he's probably like, I don't know, it's it's really interesting. Um. Man, don't you think this starts like a 60-30 split at the beginning of the season in favor of Dalvin? And it Where's ends, the other 10%? Or, I'm sorry. Well, all the other <laughs> dudes. It's like 60-40, 70-30, somewhere in there between yeah. Dalvin and Brees in favor of Dalvin at the beginning of the season. And then it ends the opposite way at the end of the season in favor of Brees as they come up on the playoffs. Like I... I personally think that I could see 70, 30 Dalvin to Brees at the beginning. And I don't think it ever swings more than 50, 50 the other way. Like I just don't, but I think it gets to 50, 50. Oh, I, yeah, I think it can get to 50, 50. I just don't think it's going to swing back into like, Oh, Hey, <sighs> Brees Hall's like the guy. Well, I almost because don't I, want either of them because of that. Of course. Right. You're just going to be in, in, in running back hell. Yeah. I mean, truly it's, and Rogers is going to have the ball in his hands almost every other play anyway, or if not more, like maybe they're not going to be slinging I, it in the eye formation or like, well, so that's the thing though, right? Because if they're going to try to figure out how to stop Garrett Wilson and putting resources and not loading up the box. Rogers has proven that he has no problem with running the ball where, you know, Dylan and, and uh, when, wh so when Dylan was in the game and there's a light box, they're turning around and giving it to him every time when Jones is in the game, you know, he's more likely to open it up and pass and dump down and, and do things like that. It, it would not be at all surprising to see something be similar uh, happen with the jets. But they're both good receivers. So who who knows? I think I have to push Brees Hall lower. I think guys I like more than him, Alvin Kamara, even with the three game suspension, like Alvin Kamara could miss is going to miss three games. Brees Hall could also miss the first three games. The difference is yeah, but, Alvin Kamara is going to come back and be a workhorse. Brees Hall yeah, is coming Kamara back to Dalvin. Kamara still has to deal with Jamal Williams though too, which but I failed to mention last week. With Jamal. But, I'm not worried about Jamal Williams at all for tomorrow. Small. Um, yeah, also not worried about Taysom. I'm just saying there's some guys even where I have like Rashad White, clearly defined role, clear running back one, just a much worse offense. Kamara, DeAndre Swift even, James Cook. I, 
I really like James Cook this year a lot. He's my sleeper Brent number Cook, one, my favorite. Cook, but Cook, Khalil Herbert took all of the reps with the first team offense for the Bears this week. Yeah, Javante Williams. Eh, we're not as high uh, on like Samaj P. Ryan is is definitely a threat there. So like that's kind of like the the cutoff of guys that we're talking about and um, Damian Pierce, yeah, Miles just, Sanders, like right. Ugh. Man, at least, at least Dalvin only signed a one year deal uh, for 8 million bucks because I think that this is a one year blip in the radar for Brees Hall just to make sure he gets right and to yeah. make sure that the Jets get the most out of Aaron Rodgers while they have him because it's only going to be for a couple of years. So hopefully Dalvin can maintain for the first half of the season. Brees Hall comes on. I'm assuming he'll take over as the starter eventually, but I don't think it's any more than much more than 50, 50 either way. Right. So, yeah. And at that point, you're almost better off just playing a random ass running back, you know, later in the season who might be the undisputed guy and you're not you like you just don't have to deal with it. But if well, either one gets hurt, then they're awesome. Well, so and it also depends like, if the Jets are putting up 35 points a week, plenty to go around. Then there's plenty <laughs> of points to go around. Right. Oh. So it's it's one of the like between the Patriots, between the Jets, they've both muddied their backfield. Yeah. Where you thought you th- kind of thought you had two undisputed guys. And you drop one Hall of Famer in one spot and one potential Hall of Famer in another spot. And like Zeke, he still got it. If, if you need a yard, Zeke is is the guy. Yeah, like and maybe Dalvin in the NFL. still averaged four and a half yards per carry last year. Like Dalvin is not tanked yet. He is. He's not as Still good. the guy. Well, he's not the guy he was, certainly, by any stretch. But he's still very good. 